Hey everyone, got something uh, related to the uh, the Radiac survey meter that uh, I took apart uh, on a previous video. Um, these are uh, Russian um, dosimeters, well inside the box it is anyway, um, uh, dosimeters which are personal um, dosimeters which you wear through um, throughout the day where you're working uh, to check your um, uh, radiation dose. These date from um, well, they say the Cold War, but I would imagine that they're, they're probably around 70s, 80s. I would have thought um, these uh, were sold um, new old stock. So um, in here we've got um, a box with all the all the gubbins in. Uh, so we're just going to take a quick look at that and um, uh, see what it's like. Uh, and after that, I'll be doing another video where I'm gonna actually going to take one of these dosimeters apart. Uh, but that will be a separate video. Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we're in the box. We've got uh, uh, a carrying strap. It all looks pretty cheaply made, to be honest. The box um, appears original, although the uh, the serial numbers don't match between the two. So this is a kit of um, um, dosimeters and the charger that goes uh, that goes with them. Um, this is um, obviously still factory sealed. It's just a, uh, a tough, tough plastic box. So here we have the um, the actual uh, meters themselves. So we've got uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, ten of them. This will be the charger. Quite a weighty, weighty bit of plastic. Oh, we do have some date. It's 1988. Guessing none of this is going to be in English. Um, calibration of some sort. I guess that's the serial number, so that should. No, it doesn't actually match. Oh, it does there. 797, sorry, 747. Ah, that's... The uh, second number there is the, uh, is the serial number for the charger. Presumably before record keeping.
And I would say this is the instruction manual. So this is for this is for records, and this is your instruction manual. So these uh, types of dosimeters were used uh, throughout the world. They're, they're quite common. Um, you can often find um, um, them in uh, second-hand stores and um, places like car boot sales and things like that. Um, these ones are Russian. Um, I just I was particularly interested because it was um, it was new new old stock, so it's exactly as it was um, was shipped. So there's nothing missing or anything, uh, which I thought was nice. Um, these um, these particular ones are sort of um, military grade is probably the right word. Um, they operate at a uh, a higher dose level, so they're less sensitive than um, normal. Um, you can get ones which are meant for medical grade, which have a much much higher sensitivity, uh, which allows them to be used in in places like hospitals and in places like that where you're just not going to find the sort of radiation that these ones are going to pick up. So these work off a, a very simple principle. Um, it uh, uses a quartz fibre which is charged um, by the charging unit. Um, I'll show you how these fit together in a moment. Um, the quartz fibre is charged which uh, means it deflects um, which allows you to see that deflection in um, a viewing window I, I, I'll try and get this on camera, but uh, it might be a bit of a problem. Um, and as um, the radiation um, passes through this or interacts with it, it slowly reduces the charge on that quartz fibre um, and then it just returns to its normal resting position. So they work on a very simple principle, but they're not particularly accurate, um, which is why they, uh, they're obviously phased out for. Um, Geiger tubes and, and other other ways of, uh, of monitoring more accurately. In this box we've got um, all these uh, identical dosimeters. Um, serial number, this one, 16390622, so they're obviously made, made in vast quantities. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they, they operate on a quite simple principle, but uh, in the, uh, the instruction manual you can actually see a, a cutaway drawing. Of the inside, which um, obviously they're, they're a little bit more complicated mechanically than, um, than the theory. Which is why I wanted to try and disassemble one of these. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'll do it, I'll probably just dremel it straight down and peel it apart. So if we have a look at this uh, charging unit now, um, it's quite a solid piece of uh, piece of plastic. Um, there's a base on here with eight screws in. Two of them are sealed. Now, as far as I know, there's a there is a battery in here, so. Um, given this has a date code of 1988, I guess um, I'm not quite sure what what type of battery is in it. So the way this um, this works is this has to um, charge up the quartz fiber inside the um, the actual um, dosimeter itself. Now, obviously the, uh, the the levels of voltage that you're dealing with um, the the charge does slowly leak away over time and be and if there's uh, if there's moisture in the the air as well, that can um, reduce the charge on the on the fiber, which obviously creates a, a false reading for the um, for your dose, which is obviously one of the reasons why these were phased out. But um, they have a, a pin in the middle there. Now that's actually spring loaded. You depress this down, a spring uh, pushes against you in the, uh, and this makes contact with the actual um, the actual electrode inside. So uh, these are these are less susceptible to moisture than some of the other ones. Um, uh, another version of this I've seen the pin there is actually the uh, the terminal, um, and they, those ones um, typically have a plastic cap which goes over the end to protect it from moisture. Okay, so I've got uh, the dosimeter set up with the camera. It's a bit fiddly because um, it's actually um, even with uh, looking through it with an eye, it's actually quite hard to. Uh, 
to see through. So uh, I'm going to try charging this up. Um, so you can see the the quartz fibre there. So as I'm holding it down, it's obviously losing charge. So I've got to keep keep going. Now the trick is to get it past the zero, and then there we go. You lift it back up to stop it discharging. So that is now um, that is now reset. So these um, uh, personal dosimeters are um, graduated in um, rad. Um, uh, 0 to 500 on the display um, which show that 500 rads is actually um, probably going to be a lethal dose so if, if you uh, some poor poor person um, ended up uh, looking at one of these and seeing the needle down at like four or five hundred then um, it's probably not good news um, to be honest, uh, on the I'm just reading on Wiki now that um, 25 rads is the lowest dose to cause clinically observable blood changes. So um, even 25 on 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 this scale is going to start um, affecting you um, seriously. So these are obviously used um, in very high dose situations um, or situations where you might get to a high dose. Okay, so there we have the. Uh Russian um, dosimeter pens. I um, hope you found it a, a bit interesting. There's not a huge amount of detail to see on the on the outside, um, but it's an interesting bit of um, Cold War tech. Um, so in the future video, I will um, take one of these apart because I certainly want to see inside it and see how it works. Um, and going by the uh, the drawing that we saw earlier, there's probably quite a bit of detail in there that uh, could be interesting. Um, so I'll also have the uh, the charger apart as well to find out exactly how this works. Um, the um, other versions of this that I've seen from the UK um, actually use a dynamo with um, capacitors and um, a diode um, to actually generate um, the uh, the DC voltages needed to actually charge the pen up. But this obviously operates on a different principle. Um, there's certainly no dynamo in here. Um, I believe it has a battery in, um, but of course we saw earlier that this is the dates from 1988, so obviously that battery is doing very well. So it'll be interesting to see exactly exactly what that is. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the like button if you like this video, and uh, leave any comments in the comments section. Thanks very much.